Hey, it's Mark. It's Michelle. And we're back with another episode of This, this and is Mark and Michelle. Michelle. Woo! Yeah. All right. Well, what we wanted to talk about tonight, let's see. Well, we... I want to tell him first. Oh, see this? Go, go. <clears throat> Mark came up with this. No, you came up with that. Well, it's mine, but you came up with the pumpkin spice. Oh, yeah. So it's two bananas, one date, pumpkin spice, and maple syrup. It's delicious. And uh, I came up with the recipe in my head the same time I came up with that one uh, for uh, uh, the cooler uh, months. And I'll, I'll film it and put it on here. But uh, it's going to be a warm pumpkin spice smoothie. And, uh, ooh, just now thought of another thing. Okay. Anyway, All so right. write we, it down. We can do pumpkin, uh, you know, like canned pumpkin, and then uh, uh, blend that up with some warm apple cider. Ooh. And pumpkin spice, and uh, maybe a little bit of almond milk or something like that. Wow! And uh, uh, and uh, uh, maple syrup. I like it already. <laughs> that'll be that'll be an excellent warm drink. So we're so. going to continue with communicating, dealing. Yes. With autistic people. Yes. In other words, how to interact. That's the word. That's it. How to interact. And uh, we're going to talk about physical uh, communication tonight. Uh, maybe not so much. Well, I don't know. We can talk. We can talk about interaction. interaction. Too. <clears throat> and uh, then the next, we're going to talk about uh, mental uh, uh, tips and suggestions in communication with uh, those on the spectrum. Yes. Right. So um, what we'll do, we'll start with the physical stuff. Yes. Tonight. Provide ample physical space. This always annoyed him. Yes. He hated when I leaned on him. Mm -hmm. I called her needy when she wanted hugs. And uh, even though I wanted hugs. Yeah. But uh, yeah, go <laughs> figure it, it, that gotta, out. But it's got to come from me. You know? Oh, <laughs> man. So many fights. Krista. Krista. And uh, so, uh, yeah, there was, there was, there were lots of altercations uh, about Mark needing hugs, but needing, me being needy, needing physical space. Uh, and uh, that just, you know, and I still find now, as you guys probably heard a couple nights ago when we were talking about bullying and, and uh, people crossing my physical boundaries and this kind of stuff, I still have some issues with that. And I think it's just uh, old traumas, people crossing my physical boundaries uh, when I was still autistic <clears throat> and, uh, I still find that it's problematic somewhat. It may just be the culture here, which I think it is somewhat as opposed to other places that I've lived, but, um, uh, physical space is very important. You, you don't want to get so close that your loved one with autism feels nervous or, uh, backs up because that's too close. And, in fact, it will put their mind, put my mind into fight or flight mode when people got too close to me. So that leads to approach them calmly and quietly. Now, uh, an example of that. Walk up slow. I mean, not so slow that it's a funeral march, but, <laughs> but slow and no waving your hands. Or uh, it was funny. Uh, Think of a feral cat. Yeah, exactly. I mean, not that autistic, uh, those with autism are animals, but, you know, if you approach in the same way, I mean, Temple Grandin says this. Uh, she talks about this all the time, uh, that uh, how you approach a person with autism is important because just walking right up to someone with autism really fast is going to make them nervous, made me nervous. And if somebody locked eyes on me, that made me even more nervous. So <clears throat> approach calmly, quietly, no talking loud, no, hey, no, uh, no using their name loudly. I just, just got over being very angry when people use my name, used my name when they didn't know me. And, I, and when I mean just, I'm talking about in the past few weeks. I had to do some forgiveness work on it, some EFT and some other stuff, because 
uh, it really angered me. It felt like a control thing, and it feels that way to NTs too. But uh, it, it was something that really bothered me, and I finally just got over that at fifth, nearly 51. So uh, approach calmly and quietly. Uh, again, no shouting, no loud talking, don't wave your hands around, no, no uh, rapid, uh, brusque, uh, squirrely gestures. There you go. <clears throat> so no sudden movements. Oh, there you go. Leads right into the next one. No <laughs> sudden movements. And <clears throat> let's talk about that for a minute. I, for the longest time, I had a fear that someone was just going to hit me, you know, like slap me. And it was an irrational fear. I was worried that just somebody, just some stranger was going to do that. Uh, and uh, out of the blue for no reason. I mean, again, it's irrational, but uh, it makes me wonder how many others with autism are worried about uh, what's the word? Um, unforewarned. Uh, surprise, <laughs> surprising uh, behaviors in the sense of, uh, well, I still haven't got the word, but what I'm trying to say, unexpected, that's it. Uh, unexpected behaviors. Uh, it's, it's, it was hard enough for me to, to read other people's body language. I didn't do it well which will lead me into the next topic in just a second. But if I can't read, read people's body language well, to me, most of their physical movements are going to be unexpected. And uh, nonverbal communication is a feature of autism. Not understanding nonverbal communication is a feature of autism. So things like high fives, low fives, it's handshakes, fun fist bumps, that kind of stuff, I had very much trouble knowing when people were going to do a fist bump because they wouldn't say, hey, fist bump, you know, or they wouldn't say, sometimes they'd say high five, but I couldn't read a person fast enough to do that, and so I was way late with the high five, if at all. And uh, because we're having to read body language that we just don't understand, that we just well, I should say, we're trying to read body language and we just don't do it well. And I worked with a woman who moved incredibly fast. I thought I moved fast. She, she was much faster than me, moving through the kitchen and this kind of stuff. And I could never read which direction she was going. And so quite often we'd be doing this thing. The, and the, the body dance? Ex exactly. The I'm trying to get around you dance, move yes. out of the way. And... Uh, it never worked. And so finally she got in the habit of going or pointing yeah. for our podcast people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Point. Yeah, exactly. She would point in the direction she was going. That helped a lot. And, uh, but, uh, if you can do that, I'd say that that'd be a good suggestion when, if you can get in the habit of announcing your high fives or announcing your fist bumps, and giving them a second to respond, that would probably go a long way towards uh, them interacting well with you and connecting well with you. I've said this before. I slow my brain down like five times when I'm teaching autistic people. I also slow my body down. Uh, I just uh, realized that. Uh, mm. I go very much slower. Uh, well, <clears throat> and that's because as you've said before, you have to give their brains time to catch on to what is going on. God knows I had to have a lot of time. H and J! <laughs> and uh, I had to have a lot of time to catch on to things when I was autistic. I mean, and, and not just body language, they're high fives and fist bumps. And, and uh, you know, and sometimes people would flip me off and I wouldn't even know they were intending it to, for me, you know, or uh, I would think they were flipping me off. Well, never mind. That's the same thing as just it. Okay. So anyway, hey, Marlo. And so you've got to give their brain time to pick up on what's going on. Just and, slow down. Yeah. Everything. Uh-huh. 
And if you announce it, if you if you say every warn, yes, yeah, then you're you're going a long way towards uh, uh, giving them the information they need. Now, that kind of leads us into should yes. we move on to the next slide, which is exactly what we just said. Verbalize why you are doing what you're doing. Now, Michelle can really talk to this point because she has to do this every time one of our autistic students. I don't even us. wait for them to say why anymore. I just say why. Because yep. they can't feel the why. They can't implicitly understand. The why is in the implicit. It yes, is. It is. It is. The I, answer to why is in the implicit. Agreed. And I and I only and I only picked up the implicit why once I was in recovery. Tell us what implicit is, Mark. Implicit. Implicit is the bits of information that you don't speak out loud that are necessary for someone else to pick up to know exactly what you mean. And they're highly emotion based. And intuition based. Must and intuition you mean. based, yes. I mean, because there's a certain amount of intuition that probably does not work for most autistic people. It didn't for me. And so going through recovery, that intuition came on. And so I was able to uh, I was able to uh, it looked like the chair had a tail. Oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, and it probably did around here. Uh, but uh, probably a year and a half to two years. So about 2015, the middle of 2015 was when I was just starting to be able to implicitly get information from her. Maybe it was earlier than that, maybe 2014. But <clears throat> she could say something and she wouldn't have to be explicit anymore. And I go, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, that was pretty shocking after that many years. After 19 years of, of having to explain everything in one, detail. Probably. Uh, yeah, probably. So let's probably go with 20, 20 and a half. Yeah. And so, uh, and that was really cool because our conversations got much shorter. Yes, more succinct. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, in fact, we even got to the point, and we still do this, uh, uh, of course we do, uh, where she wouldn't even have to say anything. I just know exactly what she was thinking. Yeah, that had never happened ever. And that was real shocking for yeah. her and for me. It was fun. Yeah, exactly. And because she she wouldn't even have to give me a look and I'd know. That's what's so cool. That about means it. intuition came on. And I mm -hmm. want to remind you that medical medium says intuition is in the gut. So you've got to heal your gut to have your intuition. And that's celery juice. Mm -hmm. That's getting the metals out. Uh-huh. That's healing the liver, because when you, you heal, the, heal liver, the liver, the rest of your organs won't start breaking down because the liver isn't working properly. Because and, and the reason the liver isn't working properly is because it's all backed up, so it's breaking down. So anyway, heal that liver. So reduce heavy metal detox. Low, smoothies. low fat. Yep, low fat. Lemon water. Ooh, even most Lemon important. water. Lemon water. And we talked about how and the order of how the things go. Celery juice. Depending on what you, you're healing first. Right. Celery juice, you could do lemon juice or lemon water after that, and then the heavy metal detox smoothie. Or if you're healing your liver first, it's lemon water first. Mm -hmm. Then tw 20 minutes later, celery juice. 20 minutes later, whatever else. Oh, so it's supposed to be lemon water first. If you're healing the liver. if you're. Oh, I thought the lemon water was always after the celery juice. No. Okay. <clears throat> if, you, if you need to flush out your liver from overnight, it's lemon water first. But if you're healing from, if you're focusing on viruses, it's celery juice first. Okay. All right. Well, I'll remember that because uh, I probably need to do the lemon water first. So, uh, but uh, let's continue on. Yes. Explain what is happening in a situation. Because when you do that, you don't usually have to explain why. Well, and that's really is <laughs> the why. Yeah. So you'll have to give a verbal explanation. You say, I want you to do this, and this is why I want you to do it. Right. And you say all the words. Mm -hmm. uh, all the words of what you want them to do. Yes. Uh, give advanced notice of change in routine if possible. Okay. Uh, that's good advice. Doesn't always work. That's why I said <laughs> if possible. Right, right. Because... I, I distinctly remember, this is probably 2008 or 2009, before we moved from Clifton and, uh, in Atlanta. 
And I remember you telling me, okay, well, we're not doing that today. We're going to someplace else. And I melted down over that. And you said, I told you three days ago. That's what you said. And I remember that. I'm like, huh. I don't remember I get that one. It must have been really traumatic. Which is why you don't remember it. Uh -huh. You're blotting it out. I yeah. blocked it out. <laughs> but uh, but I, I totally remember that. And I thought, man, she told me, she told me, gave me plenty of notice, but I'm still upset about it. And I remember thinking, I'm like, why am I upset about it? I never did figure it out until I realized I had autism about three or two or three years later. Yeah. And uh, but now I realize routine is so important. You guys know this because you've got kids. But routine is so important because for me, when I was autistic, having the routine made me feel safe. Because it was predictable. Yes. And because of the predictability. Maybe the predictability made me feel safe. Well, yes. that'd be what it is. So give advance notice of change in routine if possible. Yeah, it was pretty bad because I was a wanderlust person when we met, and I liked road trips. I liked day trips. And we took lots of road trips. And we we lived in Georgia in Atlanta, so the mountains were all around us, and I wanted to go a lot. And he never wanted to go, and he complained, and I'd drag him along. Look at that. I'd drag him along. He'd have his nose in a book, and I would say, look at that. And, and he a mile would, would go by. A mile before he I'm looked like, up. You need to point sooner than that. Point sooner. That's what I tell him. Mm. Yeah, but I'd be in a book, so I couldn't see it anyway. It's amazing that we stayed together. That's because you weren't willing to give up. Yes. And neither was I. And so, <laughs> all right, that brings us on to the next one. Know that the autistic emotional state is affected by their mental state of frustration and anger without regulation. Wow, did I write that? You must have, because I don't wow. remember writing that. But it, it's I'm not true. sure what it means. <laughs> well, in other words, quite often when I was autistic, my mental state was definitely determined by how much frustration and anger I had. And the last word, without the last two words, without regulation, yeah, my, my mental emotional state was unregulated all the time. And it was interesting to go start recovery, be on it for like a year or two years, and then hear somebody say, well, uh, have you ever heard of emotional regulation? And I was like, no. So I learned about it. You know, and, and it's the ability to express your emotions at appropriate times. Uh, your ability to uh, manage your emotions at inappropriate times and then later express them or not. You know, and I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but that was the simplest. That was the basic things to me. But when I was autistic, I did not have the ability to regulate what few emotions I could feel. And uh, mainly because they were so under the radar, it was hard for me to know I had things to regulate, emotions to regulate. Mm. So uh, most of the time, there was frustration and anger determining any emotional state for most autistic people. And... Uh, all you have to do is deal with a bunch of angry autistic adults because they're angry all the time and frustrated all the time. Look, I get it, but that is, but that is the those are the two main streaks uh, that they that they have running through their lives is anger and frustration because I did and now I don't at all. That's because we curbed your strap. Well, a lot of it. Yeah, if that was it, and the medals as well, I think. Well, definitely, but the strep was even when you were on the GAPS diet. The pandas mean? Uh, whatever you, you would take the garlic for. Yeah. The, and the, that worked. The negative, the, the, the negative mindset, the anger that would come out of the negative mindset, then the frustration that would come out of the anger and the negative mindset. And because after you got rid of the metals, you would still have that happen. You have still had that edgy. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. It hasn't been nearly as bad as it was. I mean, because this second round, or well, the, these last few weeks of us doing the heavy metal detox has gotten rid of so much that it doesn't come out as strongly as it did. I don't think. I mean, what do you think? Well, you haven't really had one since this latest round. I'm talking about since that first month that we did it. To my January metal, 2018. Yeah. <clears throat> to 2018. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you got rid of the metals, and that really changed you a lot. 
Yeah. But um, when you would eat strep foods or something, it would really come back, that anger and frustration. Yeah, yeah. Well, it would come back really strong, but I think that it has come back a couple times on the medical medium diet, mm -hmm. just not as strong. Right, because you <clears throat> fed the virus or the, or the strep. So I'm saying it's different than metals. It's a okay. different side of mm -hmm. autism. Okay. All right. And <clears throat> that is, uh, we can recap these real quick for everybody uh, because that was the last one. But uh, I guess the suggestion we might uh, put with know that autistic emotional state is affected by their mental state of frustration and anger, unregulated frustration and anger, is uh, unfortunately you have to walk on eggshells. Yes. And I'll be honest, it really bothers me when I have those come back, when I have those behaviors come back now, because. Uh, oh, someone from Austria. Hey, that's cool. Christine, how are you? <laughs> She's eating breakfast. Advance notice never works with Valerie. It gives her too much uh, time to stress. You know, I hadn't thought about that, Chris. That's probably a good point. That yeah. may, I guess it depends on what it was. I would probably have stressed out too. So maybe that's why Michelle sprung it on me at the last minute. We're taking a car ride. I only an sprung and a half it on you if it came up at the last minute. Well, that's true. It wasn't safe. Otherwise. <laughs> right. Well, either way, it isn't going to be safe. So again, back to the eggshells. Yeah. So for the most part, with autistic adults and maybe kids as well, probably it sounds like kids as well from what I'm hearing, you have to just – you have to walk on eggshells all the time, and that makes for a lot of stress. Well, and it gives caregivers. There is an actual syndrome. Uh, mm, was that Cassandra syndrome? Cassandra, uh, um, for caregivers of autistic people. I uh, didn't know that until someone else told me that I had the symptoms of it mm -hmm. that, that I had described. I've gotten rid of them now because I did a lot of work on myself. But there is an actual syndrome. Mm -hmm. Feel like you're being held hostage by the autism. I guess that's probably the if easiest If you can way. Google that. Yeah, the Cassandra syndrome. Look it up because I think a lot of you will fall in that category and you'll find it interesting to learn about because it will help you uh, get over it. So, Even more so if it's your husband. Or, true. Or your spouse. True. All right. Let me quickly go over these. Physical. Physical tips. Provide <laughs> ample physical space. Number two, approach calmly and quietly. You don't know quick squirrely gestures, don't be loud, uh, don't use their name loudly or anything else, and have a calm voice when you talk to them. No sudden movements, right? No squirrely movements, don't wave your hands, uh, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Mental Under the, tips. Uh -huh. Number one, verbalize why you are doing what you're doing. In other words, tell them why you're doing what you are. Number two, explain what is happening in a situation. In other words, tell them what's going on in the process. But that's all, usually that's telling them why as well. Give advanced notice of change in routine if possible. Unless it's Valerie. Right, or me. Because back It depends then, on the situation, I it guess. It really does. So again, eggshells. Know that the, oh, four. Know that the autistic emotional state is affected by their mental states of frustration and anger, which are unregulated. So again, you're going to have to always approach with eggshells, like we're walking on eggshells. Mm -hmm. So, well, is there anything else we want to talk about? Um, I was just remembering that, you know, if I have to change something up in a routine of a lesson, mm. I'll say, okay, now we're going to do this. Instead, because I want to see if you can whatever. So uh, if you couch things in terms like that, it goes over a little better. Because I have one who's pretty severe, and he says, okay. <laughs> you know, that story reminds me of how stuck my brain would get on one thing. Mm -hmm. And then having to change was and, and focus on another project mm -hmm. or task was incredibly right difficult. so I would give him time to, to transfer the thought to whatever yeah sometimes it took me weeks yeah I mean no joke I mean I couldn't do homework very well because I couldn't focus but secondly even if I did sit down I might get involved in it 
and keep pushing through it. But then I'd have other homework to do. And it was just so difficult to stop doing zoology and move over to molecular and cellular biology. It was just like, oh, so it'd take me an hour or two just to transfer over. Mm -hmm. You know, difficult. You needed to be able to tell yourself, okay, now I'm going to do this now because I need to do whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah tell him, telling myself anything was didn't work like anybody else telling me. Right. So, well, guys, that is us for tonight. Keep doing the celery juice, and the, the lemon, lemon water, water, and, and the, the heavy metal, metal detox, detox smoothie. smoothie. Thanks for joining us, Christine. Ex exactly. Have a good day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow at 10.45 okay. p.m. Bye, guys. Bye.